He's the CTO of NASA. Oh, he, he has been in for a while from the very beginning. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, I'm of course. I'm. I'm thousands of miles away from NASA, but you know, to media, and website, and and all things more closely connected and maybe have some connections to NASA as well. But anyway, um, they seem to be able to somehow, apart from the innovations, collaborations with uh, with Elon Musk, etc. But, you know, to be in a way independent on the activities and research, what they put out in terms of, of actual facts and images and and knowledge about climate change how they have uh, you know through the network of satellites all kinds of satellites is is still you know an american in a way and current american in a way yeah. so yeah apart from also you know ah uh all the hubble images i mean this is really great stuff but um yeah what's well, that's good connection you know you mentioned apache and I, I don't know if you if you saw that, but um, I think it was Jack Jack Park who actually uh, put forward his thoughts, his association with the Apache Foundation, mm -hmm. the what you described. Now I don't know if you had because you want to follow up on it somehow. Um, maybe a, a one on one with Jack on this might be useful as well because he. Kind of knew about the story of of how she was going from let's say in, inventing this server to a foundation and being self sufficient in in a way. Yeah, okay, honestly, like I and I asked Chris, what was the inflection point? And obviously, retro retroactively, retrospectively. It's yeah. easy to pinpoint, uh-huh, this is where it started working, you know, the, this independent open source vehicle. But he also pointed out into that direction that, hey, they just took a server and they, everyone was interested in making sure it's alive and it started growing. And, you know, Google's, IBM's and others kept supplying people, which is more importantly, to make sure that it's alive and all the infrastructure is alive and now they have two types of projects the projects that are um, you know self-organized in terms of apache and the ones that are corporate projects and there is no structural difference between those they all function in the same way in this you know apache way uh, which i have to catch up reading on and better understand the, the nuances because we also started talking about the licenses. Um, like how do we make sure it's open source license, but the one that, you know, corporates are accepting and also the one that is not misused for any kind of uh, weird stuff in, in terms of like military applications. Yeah, and yeah. What, what he told me is Apache came up with this Apache license, obviously for the same reasons. They wanted to make sure that they can collaborate with IBM, Google's, and other big companies. And uh, the, the, the thing that prevented them was uh, IBM lawyers saying that, hey, we can't risk being sued by collaborating with you and co-creating software. So we need a license that protects both us and you from potential liability. So they went ahead and created this version that basically supports both sides and creates this public good um, result, which I also have yet to understand how it actually functions. One thing, it doesn't prevent the, the military and bad use cases. And this is something, you know, to think about it, but it doesn't seem anyone figured out um, how, how to establish that. But it is, I, 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 see, I see perfectly the, the similarity in, in, in terms of challenges and issues. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, 
Irene dropping in. Uh, so I can imagine. <laughs> hi, say hi to Irene. Hello. Hey. 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 It, was, it was saying he had a talk with um, the CTO of NASA. Okay. On, you know, building a server and then going into. Apache has a web server service. Yeah, no, the, the similarity between the, the Apache story and the Corona Y story in terms of, you know, developing something mm -hmm. through a, uh, hey. an ecosystem of collaboration and in, in invention ideation. Just, by the way. <laughs> uh, um, uh, moving forward into, let's say, uh, open source licensing. And as well as commercial partnerships like with IBM and such, mm -hmm. uh, so enabling commercialization of the technology as well. What I was trying to say that the the the, the parallel with Corona Wise is striking in terms of issues of of organization, uh, funding, uh, the the maybe elusive tension between. Uh, commercialization and open source um, foundational work. Uh, it'd be great to follow up on that and uh, to see if uh, yeah. And let's let's involve Jack as well because he was also very much you know into this thinking. I had to track back this this conversation on uh, on Slack, but this would be a great uh, a, a source of inspiration, but also how how to yeah. Uh, and, yeah and i think the, the point that um that's okay <laughs> Later, I'll, I'll, yeah but you you don't have to go you may okay later uh, yeah yeah it's good your name's arrow may yeah we, we should catch a uh, catch up yeah, I've also been very busy working on other things. But, uh, Absolutely. Now, and then we'll yes, please. Yeah, maybe I'm a cut, mate. Bye, Arrow. There goes Bye -bye. my. I bet there goes my cat. <laughs> okay. Um, this. Um, you know, we ended the call on a very beautiful note of the fact that um, Chris kind of said that there are two ways to to build amazing things kind of like take uh the existing stuff break it and kind of re reassemble or yeah. the second way the one that seems to be working for apache is kind of like being in this plane that flies around different stakeholders assembles pieces from them and brings it, it home you know and i think that's the thing that will work for us we just need to make sure that we have this kind of like map outlined of different stakeholders. Then we have specific needs, which are very different from one stakeholder to another, be it university or, you know, Google or IBM. And then we have vehicles of delivery, you know, just like just a boat that cruises between all of these and a destination where it comes home to this shipyard we're, we're able to to assemble pieces together and basically create this decentralized um you know way of of combining human potential with the uh, the incumbent system needs yeah well yeah clear at, at least clear to me uh, and and there is a here an, an elusive paradox between do you work from what is or do you work from what should be? Uh, because I think it is elusive because that's that's how nature always worked. You have you have this material, I mean organized an organism or whatever, and then end of life cycle it dissolves <laughs> and. Uh, um, assembles itself and we call that adaptation and transmutation but it is informed that was what I always also trying to point out in my cast presentation it's in hyphen formed 
by what could or what should be. And that's kind of metaphysical, but it is, it is about the, the promise of the future, what is wished for, or uh, a pure intention, or indeed somehow the energy of, of expressed needs or wants or wished for. And there is this attraction between the potentiality of, of what is dissolved, what can be reassembled or redesigned, and the, the, the promise of uh, what should become. I mean, this is the whole tra trajectory of, of evolution. I mean, it started out with just, you know, neutrons, yeah. plus whatever. So, very practically, because we can be <laughs> philosopher, philosophical about this, but if we map out a, a kind of, you know, uh, abstracting from from the, the, the felt immediate needs situation if we can map out the stakeholders their needs the let's say the promise or the the superordinate goal they are able and to and long to 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 move towards to we can then say okay we have this this raw material in terms of services infrastructure etc or maybe already you know parts of the existing system that fits it well. I mean, that's how nature works as well. It doesn't throw everything away. This is, this is the sandwich approach again. Yeah, <laughs> and the sandwich is, is a great analogy because we keep talking about different kind of problems, but the reality is these problems exist on different layers of, of this uh, ecosystem. So remember this diagram that I drafted, who knows yep. when? And the, the thing is that these layers, like the organization vision level, resource level, industry uh -huh. level, and the, the actual rocket level, they all have different uh, challenges. And it's important for us to understand where these challenges live because we, it, it's impossible for us to solve on all levels. Like we, in terms of building the actual rocket, building the, the literature review tool, the challenges are completely different from actually working with the industry, working with um, research labs or universities or others. And in terms of resource level, it's also another challenge of working with funders, working with investors or you know philanthropists or working with uh, data providers or creating tools. Because I, I truly believe that there is a potential to recreate what Apache di did like 20 years ago, but for this new golden e era of data science, and mm -hmm. we're here to establish that, except it's so multi-layer that we keep bouncing between different challenges and different layers that we're not able to, to solve any of that. So it's almost like um, I had a, a call with Anton yesterday and we decided, okay, so maybe let's narrow down the focus for the next months and yeah. um, limit our uh, limited workforce and uh, human resources to focus on a couple of objectives um, down the, the, the line, down the layers and actually focus on things like, you know, literature review product making sure that it gets into some sustainable form so we yeah. can go ahead and say, okay, so we are not just a literature review product, but we're actually able to put together all of these things together and produce more of these literature review products. But it's almost, we cannot say that until literature review is a, a product, a project, because we need some external validation for us to be able to pitch um, this vision and say, hey, there is a place for radical innovation in the world and we actually have a framework. We know how to do it. And it's not just philosophy, it's practical. And you can see how it all you know, transformed through a random chaotic innovation into a fully fledged out um, you know, product that works and helps researchers battle the pandemic. And that touched upon every aspect or subject on every level in some way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think that, 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 that the focus objective, so to speak, is, is uh, or, or, or objective focus, <laughs> is, uh, <clears throat> is good. Because that's, I, I guess, the, 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 to the reality of the people we serve and in a way we rely on in terms of validation or financing. And I truly believe that literature review is pivotal because uh, if so, if, if we are dealing with whatever the industry level or the industry partner or sector or whatever, we are dealing with complex challenges. Uh, so we are being, being in need of integrating expertise and knowledge and that is fragmented and dispersed through all kinds of papers and documents and literature and we're not talking only about scientific papers but also articles from from by us or by an expert, yep. uh, selected relevant channels sources or whatever so in in essence solution this technological augmented collective intelligence solution is applicable to many issues felt by and, and experienced by many different sectors pertaining to Because that's yeah. how it actually bubbled up from, from being um, a rocket on, on this level to up, up and being yeah. a tool that you know, powers all the other industries. But until it is <laughs> solving something for someone, we can't really claim that it's, there's a valid uh, evolution from being a project to being an infrastructure for all other industries to utilize it. Clear. The only thing I, I don't want to, I don't want to get involved in in all the technical stuff because I'm you know I've been a programmer and a systems designer, systems developer, but I'm really not. I don't think you should. Uh, there's <laughs> plenty of of stuff um, to do in the non-technical side. Actually, I would say technical side is easy. The, the, the side that is not easy is the actual relationships. And um, obviously, like, I know how to build relationships, except relationships take time, effort, and the actual investment in terms of, uh, you know, mental investment. And yeah. uh, I'm over expended on on that type of uh, external investment so i think what would be great is uh for us to actually improve this uh pitch deck that we've created um called curiosity but also research boost and um this is this is for us to kind of like further define i really like the name curiosity because it's like curious science and citizen scientists um, uh -huh. But I also understand why uh, people like Surge are vouching for a name that sounds more commercial, like Research Boost, uh, because this way you can actually attract people that are interested in applying it in commercial environments versus, you know, pitching them the just open science and just, you know, the, the kind of curiosity angle being more practical about solving their needs, first of all. And yeah. uh, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think both both words, both approaches are valid, but in that primarily, you know, to, to be able to connect to incumbent systems, more the conventional. Uh, yeah, good. Have you but seen you this uh, <laughs> presentation, by the way? Sorry? Have you seen this presentation, by the way? Not, not yet. I know. I I know. I knew, and I know that it's it's there. That that deck is and was developed. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, the use cases here are separated into three uh, main stakeholders. The the um, epidemics response, which is more like agency, like governmental agencies, then the paper writing, grant writing. That's more on the research institutions. And um, even, you know, in terms of the organizations that Slava is working with, 
these are still interested in, in grants and uh, we may become that applicable uh, open source provider that helps them apply for grants. And the last one is pure pharma, pure uh, business, and uh, obviously with the notion of helping humanity, but completely different processes than governmental agencies or, uh, or research labs. And we have value proposition for, for these, uh, which is helping organize research evidence, help with literature review, help with grant writing, evidence allocation. Yeah, yeah, clear. Yeah. Um, yeah. The users, epidemiologists, first of all, but also market researchers when it comes to actual pharma industry. Um, we put together similar solutions just to understand what exists currently. Um, and then uh, we put clients because clients are actually different from users. The, the users are going to use it every day. The clients are not going to use it. They're going to pay for it. And that's going to be, you know, public health agencies, universities, commercial companies for them to equip their researchers with this tool. So that's a thought process on this. And Clear. Yeah, yeah. Team, I just put the document into the grant. Topic. Yes. Okay. So I think that's our uh, closest point of, of being a superconductor in terms of a, a first viable project. And we just need to, to hit, you know, many of these different stakeholders from different uh, sides and see what resonates, what doesn't, and tweak and re, uh, retry, basically. The, the rapid prot uh, prototyping of the business development. Yeah. Well, that, that's, uh, I think that's, that's great. It resonates very much with the approach I had in 95 by service and product development. You know, have, have an initial rough uh, grant design uh, uh, taking into account uh, previous knowledge, an assessment, uh, ideation, and within two weeks get customers and users in the loop. Uh, so yeah, that makes sense. I, I saw somewhere that you that you or someone else had uh, did a. Um, uh, a research on LinkedIn on on epidemiologists, or I mean, because basically we're talking about the, the the task to to validate in terms of use cases and, and let's say commercial abilities qualities get it validated by, and then we need a panel of trusted validators. Yeah. By the way, I think in terms of what's going on in in the field competitors, potential collaborators. I mean, this, uh, uh, I mean, uh, check in, check up with uh, Irene would be very useful because, um, well, that's part of, part of our job, not validating, but knowing of the needs of users, yeah. which she tends to, to serve. <laughs> uh, and in terms of, let's say, organizational, legal entities, uh, being in a position to contract or to negotiate or whatever you, you call it, the customers, uh, yeah. the paying customers. And there's, there's that divergence as well. Um, so, so this list is, uh, is purely yeah. for us to, to start reaching out to these people and see okay. if we can get the buy-in in whatever we, we're doing. Most of them are like university or agencies but there are a couple that are from, from pharma. So, uh, yeah, like yeah, this person, for example. Uh, I haven't gone through all of these, but there are different, um, obviously different, different angles from which we can uh, try to, to approach these people. And it's, it's honestly just a, a time investment at, at this point because there is nothing we can do in terms of like, uh, you know, <laughs> buying gifts for them to, to come to us. It's really about resonance on their side. If, if we are creating something that they can use, they will come. Yeah, and yes, I agree. And then that, that's what I really 
due to at least my idea about this narrative that you come up with a, an, an appealing story about how it came into being, what we do, what we have accomplished, uh, but it also relates to, that's more, becoming more explicit now, we should have also a list of, you know, the keepers are now involved in, in Corona Y, I have some good references about them. I mean, knowing that Slava, for instance, is a member of several various working groups that are that's information that is, in a way, con convincing for these external parties being representative of the users or customers or paying customers to know about. It's just to make it less anonymous and make it more, you know. So that's that's ask I, I'd like to take on as well in terms of coordination that we get these credentials and these you know there's more detailed information about who is involved in what showing that we are a professional community in resonant and engaged with the environment um, clear um, oh what was I was about to say um, yeah um, do we have facts and figures about our current, let's say, use cases? Which universities, which research and development uh, department, people with which functions are now using our stuff? Because that's, that's what we should be able to communicate as well. And the I mean, tricky thing is that like we we don't really have that stuff in in an like in the we, we don't capture it because um well the the only current thing that exists is this proof of concept and the proof of concept that my honey pulled together is basically you know what could be used but it's not the most intuitive thing to use it's just a dashboard and i think there is also a gap between people coming in, in to this page and really understanding what this is and why yeah. they should care. And that's what we're trying to accomplish with the UI UX people on the literature review calls. I yeah. think we had some movement yesterday. And yeah, yeah. yeah I was not able to, to, to look at the video, but I know it was there and it was vital uh, session. Yeah, and um, I think more and more people are understanding what we're doing within Corona Eye, so that is also helpful. And there is this um, epidemic Q&A uh, challenge that um, actually uh, Allen Institute for AI, National Library of Medicine, uh, National Institute of Standards of, uh, and Technology is doing, and this is con continuation of a Cord 19 challenge because it's essentially taking Cord 19 and trying yeah. to answer questions uh, based on all the you know work that has been done so far so here's like a, a an example of how it looks like in terms of the structured challenge and I think we're going to tackle it with our existing infrastructure. They just started this challenge yesterday, which is timely, but I think it will also provide a nice showcase of like why the work that we're doing is important and how it fits into the uh, global needs. Okay, so but this is, uh, this is um, a public challenge or at least public. This is yeah. not organized yeah. by us, it's, it's organized by those four people or those four organizations. Yeah, organizations, and um, I'm pretty sure there are even more organizers behind the scenes. Of course. <laughs> as always. Yeah, as always, yeah, yeah, multi-layered. Um, so we are in the process of participating and showing off. Yeah, in a way. I just sent you uh, that link. Um, okay, yeah. So that's what you know we me and Anton discussed yesterday kind of like focusing on on three things internally and internally means like what me and Anton do every single day to support the, the community and obviously we do many things beyond uh, just three initiatives but overall we are trying to tackle literature review tool make it a sustainable project 
we're trying to uh, enable this Q and A piece, this the second thing, a new thing, and kind of like funnel it to literature review. And the third thing, uh, not sure if you noticed, but we kicked off this new team uh, that is computer vision, uh, pulmonary disease. And yeah, no. it's been amazing because we kind of took what worked and improved it. And, you know, the first day we had 30 people jumped in. Then we had a presentation from Nebraska Medical Center researcher. Yeah. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like, it's much better than it was before because before we needed to hunt down the medical researchers. Here, medical researcher is actually driving the team and has enough buy-in to solve this problem. And funding? Funding, I think it's possible through the Nebraska Medical Center. We just need to show them that there is enough viability for us to help them solve this problem. Because there is a reason why this researcher exists in, in our Slack and why she was willing to give presentation. She's not yeah. doing it just because, you know, she's passionate about impact. That means it's the actual problem that they're dealing with and they need solution ASAP, that they're willing to jump into these different communities and get help. So it's about tying these together, the need again, and the, the potential and just you know, driving it home. Yes, exactly. That's what we're here for, doing both things. I mean, in terms of like superconducting, we're trying to find the path of least resistance and the, you know, the, the path <laughs> where the, the current can pass uh, in the shortest manner because we as community also need to make sure we're funded, we have um, enough capacity to grow and you know, kind of like grow potential uh, inside of us. And one thing that we realized this week is Corona Y as, as a place is really about the learning and really about taking people that are, are interested in upgrading their skills, their kind of life, career, professional life. And that's what people come here for. They come to um, jump from a junior data scientist to a senior data scientist through a real impactful problem. And we had the skull with Alex Lofgren and he, uh, he told us that in the past three months, he learned a lot. And I, and I was like, wow, like I, I actually, like this is the first time I actually hear someone confirm the hypothesis that it's not just us assuming that people learn, it's them validating that and when he uh, when we asked him because he's also looking for a job as apparently many people in our community they're just not vocal about it um we asked him so what do you think like if there was a potential like nebraska medical center coming to us and saying hey we need your help to the extent we're gonna fund the team would you be interested in it and for a second he was like well, I came here for learning, so I didn't really expect any monetary stuff, but you know, maybe that would be great. So it's like people have this notion of Corona Y as a learning volunteer community, but they all have needs in terms of careers. And it feels that we're able to fulfill those needs, those needs. career center in a way. And that's also the, the closest um, path to making Corona Y sustainable. And yeah, yeah. because Corona Y is, as an organization is really about the learning, education and open science. What we aim to create in terms of the umbrella, the, the actual radical innovation is a little bit different because it actually captures a much broader uh, landscape a much broader needs and again, a much broader <laughs> shipyard of different uh, ships to be sailed. And Corona Y becomes this sandbox, this, uh, let's say, uh, a building on a shipyard where people are trained to be sailors and they're actually, you know, coming as, as newbies. And they say, hey, I'm only able to, I don't know, tie the, the knots or, or something. And I want to, um, sail and be captain of, of the ship. And we tell them, all right, like jump in here, you know, help build us uh, a small boat first 
and then yeah. who will, will collaborate and elevate you to to something bigger assuming that there is a need from external stakeholder absolutely Does that make sense? absolutely yeah yeah that's 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 a perfect story apart from the fact that it reminds me of the, this beautiful saying of syntax superi but uh, uh, in the next chapter is, oh, by the way, we have some assignments of, 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 of companies who wants to bring stuff to some faraway land and take some valuable stuff back. How about joining us on, on this, this journey? And uh, well, maybe you, you end up- in Our principles and values have to come in and, and really qualify the journeys. Okay, then it's back to what, what we focus on. If if we if we uh, set sail and and uh, um, eventually reach, detect and reach shore where we can deliver something like a literature review tool, mm -hmm. then it all makes sense. Yeah, and and you know what the beautiful the beautiful thing of this analogy, what drives it all, is the wind of change. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So I, I, I don't see it as two separate stories. It's 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 twofold. And yeah. the shit we have we are in now is the fact that we all now already for some centuries try to uh, analyze the it. layers. Yeah. Yeah. So and and they must be integrated. I mean, I've I've been in the business of for twenty for twenty years or so in organization development. What really, when it came down to it, what really matters was intertwining, integrating the operational business in terms of being productive, financing it, surfacing it, and whatever, with adaptability. The development organization, offering opportunities for people to grow, but also to come up with new ideas, new stuff that is needed because <laughs> this wind of change, because nothing stays the same. And it was exactly what I was talking about with uh, Bianca earlier this afternoon. This is what we have to what what we have to offer, what we can offer. Uh, so it's twofold. It is being productive, being creative, being co-creative, and being in in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in an environment for learning and development. And this is exactly what many corporations tie it back to let's say funding opportunities and foundations and corporations willing to support the large corporations the, the really huge ones do have the capacity the medium and small size companies don't have that's one of the big problems in, in terms of sustainable innovation um, and and the, the bigger corporations don't have that agility and that way of of you know being creative chaotic radical and they need this type of partnerships to train their trainees their and management development young potential whatever they want to call it in their policies and we offer them these other opportunities yeah. and by the way by using this this technology that will augment us to be co-intelligent and solve these complex problems you're facing also in you all oh by the way all of us so yeah. it's, it's quite a simple story and i was also telling her and and we are still convinced about that crisis this pandemic it's more and more in in the awareness that there is something wrong we should let, let go of something old we should embrace the new and emerging and that's exactly what we practicing what we preach and we are productive so well th that's basically the amen story. yeah amen now, uh, now <laughs> let's stop preaching to the converted here um this is what what must be nailed in this narrative this is what be, must be nailed in this uh, pitch deck in terms of facts and figures clear statements on on what and who and what and this enticing story about why are we doing this and why should we collaborate on this, by the way? And why should we contribute to you and you to us? Because we coexist. Just one planet rolling around. 
let's collaborate. Okay, now focus, focus. Um, I, I agree totally on this literature review tool for the, for the point I was making earlier on. And this is maybe not for the immediate focus, but for later on to be able to, let's say, to validate the, the usage, use of this in other fields as well, and especially where it becomes transdisciplinary. So health, economy, bio, biodiversity, systems, etc. That's already popping up here and there. So yeah. I'm, I don't want to go into the technical stuff or deeply participate in the technical focused teams. There's one thing that must somehow, somehow to some degree must be secured is that ideally, the, 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 the service in terms of infrastructure, tools, coding, uh, et cetera, is in a way generic to all these different problems. Now it's focused on this, you know, this pandemic, uh, medical science, literature review, but ideally it should be applicable to all. And I can tell you it is applicable. It's just a matter of, you know, uh, time and people repurposing it. And actually that brings me to another point that uh, we forgot to talk about. So not sure if you saw, but I created this um, grant list and it's, it's a big list of all the opportunities yeah. that are yeah. still active. And maybe you could go through these and just like indicate where you see fit uh, for us as both, you know, the mothership and literature review uh, project. And um, just like the way you did was the uplink, just telling us, hey, this is actionable, we should do it. Yeah, that's great. I have this, this piece of this document already here on, on paper. Because what I see is that we have an, a narrative, a pitch deck, um, and we are still in need of some piece of information to fit into that, you know, to make, yeah. to make it a, at least a 1.0 piece of document. Then we have a list of opportunities, the grant opportunities, funding opportunities, partner opportunities. I mean, there's just some blended hybrid thing in terms of actual grants, funding, Thing, for instance, like um, Bianca is now working on, so that fits this blended financing stuff. I wish you would come mm -hmm. back to Monday. Then we have at, at least the communication and funding team, uh, you know, responsible for it, acting on it. That should lead to engagement using our networks, various networks. So we check on whose network is most useful for, you know acting engagement engagement in terms of applying for grants or you know uh, inviting to a conversation individual one-on-one -on -one or more group wise in terms of presentation of corona y and beyond and then um what we need for that is uh and that's to be all well um maybe specific expertise in terms of topic expertise, subject expertise, or grant application expertise, or investment expertise, so that we have to map that as well and to organize that as well. Um, and that's maybe, that, that is not maybe, it's certainly a separate action alongside, you know, uh, gaining uh, legal or law expertise or whatever. Um, because Slava may be, I call it bridgehead or, you know, helping out on that. On the uh, grant side, he definitely is aware how things are, are working, but for only European Union uh, kind of like ecosystem, because I, I truly believe it's different for US. Exactly. And not a subject, a topic to avoid, because if we if we profile ourselves as global, giving also the fact that we are, we are here for, let's say, shared global problems and challenges, we should try to be able to act global, no matter yeah. what we kind of created as elusive separate parts, there is separate laws. Not yeah, I agree. The, the, the subject of 
decentralized uh, legal governance and entities is definitely in the air. It's like we just need to to make sure that we're creating the right ones for the right opportunities. And that's where the, the grants and all kinds of funding um, schemes come come in. Yeah, there may be a, there may be a check and act problem, but then, then we'll capture that when we come to that point. Yeah, I uh, have to jump into the next call. Yeah. But this has been great. Uh, sounds like we're... Have you recorded this? Yes. Have you recorded it? I'll send the, the recording later. And uh, I think we're, we're syncing up nicely and it's a matter of getting other people in, in this kind of sync and then being super focused on these things that we mentioned, going through the, yes. uh, the funding opportunities, syncing with Audrey and Derek uh, next week and just pushing really hard for the next two weeks to make something happen. I agree. Awesome. Totally. All right. We will make we will make it happen. Okay, for now. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>